Here's the realistic morning routine as a wannabe YouTuber who does calisthenics. So like most people, I wake up, give or take around 6 to like 6.30 a.m. I know it's kind of early, but there's a reason why. And I'm not going to be showing y'all like each and every single detail of what I do. It's not a pretty sight. Just trusting on this one. <laughs> um, plus, it'll take way too long to record. I'm not even going to cap. I, I'm being honest with y'all. But anyways, after me, you know, using the restroom, doing what I got to do, take care of business. You feel me? I always make sure that I have to make my bed. So I believe a routine in a nutshell boils down to the smallest task that you have and holding yourself accountable to be consistent with it, no matter how big or small that task is. So shout out to my mom because she definitely drilled in the idea of making my bed every single morning. Like I do this non-negotiable, bro. This is like, you have to do this if you wanna be consistent and feel more productive throughout your rest of your day. If you're not doing your bed, that's automatically one mistake that you're not doing. So as a kid, I never understood the importance of like why I had to make my bed other than it being like, I guess like neat, tidy and organized. But as I grew up, started living by myself, I was like, yo, me making my bed actually does have a lot of benefits to it. So let's talk about whenever my bed is not made. Here's what I experienced. As I continue to like walk past my room and see my bed not being made, I always in the back of my mind subconsciously would feel like I just had an urge to not want to do something, not feel motivated, right? And every time I see my bed too, like not being made, I just had that that strong urge to just want to lay on it. So it made me subconsciously like no cap, feel more lazy and just unmotivated in general. And this is all just because of a lack of tidiness, right? A lack of like being organized. I know that's crazy, but there's been actually articles um, addressing this exact specific matter. There's actually a link between disorganization and one's mental health. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep about it, but here's what the gist of it says. Studies have shown that individuals who describe their living spaces as cluttered or full of unfinished projects are more likely to experience feelings of stress and depression. Clutter can create a sense of chaos and overload, which can be particularly overwhelming in today's already fast paced world. Like, wow. Right off the bat, man, science is being very, very specific to exactly how I'm feeling, right? And I have no background in anything related to like the psychology or the sciences of like how we feel, whatever that terminology is. I'm just the guy who does fitness, okay? And just to be clear, I've never shown any kind of sign of depression. I've never shown any kind of like episode or mood swing in terms of like feeling down for an extended period of time, okay? So it's completely natural to feel you know, depressive episodes or depressive moods or feeling kind of sad, gloomy and down here and there. Right. But I've never had it for an extended period of time. But I most definitely have shown some kind of signs of like being unsettled, having a little bit of anxiety whenever like my space or environment is like full of clutter and it's just disorganized. So, yeah, once I found that link between the two, I was like, yo, I gotta make my bed every single morning just to kind of get the day starting off right. That said, let's talk about the next thing that I do in my morning, which is the morning prayer. So many of you may or may not know, but I'm a Muslim and essentially we have five obligatory prayers. One being the Fajr prayer. So that's like the sunrise prayer. And essentially we have to observe and perform this prayer in the morning. And this is like a religious obligatory action that we have to do. As a person who practices Islam, you have to perform your first daily prayer. So not only is it an obligation religiously, right? It's also a personal commitment that I made sure to stick by because I learned one or two things from it, actually. It actually forces me to wake up in the morning, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter how nice and warm that bed is, how nice it is to be under the covers, especially when it's cold, man, I got to get up for that morning prayer regardless. And what I noticed was like, this is actually a game changer in terms of like one's mindset. Okay. And I don't want to get too religious on y'all. All right. This is not a religious based channel. This is a fitness based channel right here, but to kind of dumb it down, this established not only a routine for me to be consistent with, but it drilled in the ethics of like understanding how to be consistent, understanding how to be, you know, structured in a way. And I believe like that's actually one of the most important things in life is that if you don't have some kind of structure into your life, a lot of things are going to fall apart because you want to almost think of your life as a bridge, 
right? You want to make sure you have the right foundation. So whatever extra or unaccounted for variable comes to that bridge, right? Like just like an 18 wheeler driving through it, a small car, hundreds of thousands of people walking on it. You want to make sure you have that foundation so you can easily still get from point A to point B. Um, hopefully y'all follow that analogy because I kind of made that on the go. But observing your prayers five times a day as a Muslim, it definitely forced me to just have more structure to my life. And I actually believe that's one of the main reasons to why a lot of people are converting or reverting to Islam is because they notice that we are very committed to our religion. And I think that just might stem down from like the mindset, right? A lot of people crave that uh, dedicated, committed mindset that us Muslims have. Now, I'm not saying everybody else who's not Muslim doesn't have that mindset, but I'm just saying what the media is saying, okay? But regardless though, like I said, not religion-based channel. If you are not following Islam or if you're not following any kind of religion, right? I still want you to at least wake up in the morning and perform a practice of like gratitude. You know, be thankful for yourself. Be thankful for the life that you have. Be grateful for what you've accomplished. You know, put out your goals out there to yourself. Like, you know, don't you don't need to be telling the people just like speaking it out loudly so you can actually hear the words that's coming out of your tongue. And that itself will kind of like drill in that confidence drilling the ability to be consistent in whatever amount of goals or things that you want to accomplish, right? So yeah, that's why I learned work for me. And I believe that can definitely be easily transitioned onto y'all. Ever since I started working out like about one to two hours after waking, it literally sets the tone for the rest of the day. I feel way more awake. I feel energized and I even feel a little bit more inspired and motivated to just get stuff done. Like, I don't know, man, something about morning workouts just hit different. And this is coming from a guy who used to work out in the evenings or even like the late night sessions. Like I'm talking like 9 or 10 p.m. I'd be in the gym. So I did a complete 180 switch up in terms of like the schedule, like when I work out. Then, of course, my favorite part about going to the gym is the fact that I actually get to walk to the gym. And this is about like a 13 to 15 minute walk to the gym. And thankfully I live in an area where the gym is like close um, in terms of like walking distance. So I'm also getting in my steps. I'm also allowing myself to essentially just feel more mentally prepared for the actual workout. Cause I'm not going to cap. Like I be still tired by that time, right? So this walk pretty much helps me get physically and also mentally awake and prepare for the gym. So uh, yeah, the walk to the gym is immaculate, like no cap. Then for my actual workout, it was a full body day centered around these three primary lifts, the weighted chin-ups, weighted dips, and also the front barbell squats. Now I won't go too deep about these exercises and what I did, but I will say this. One of the most important things that you can do in this life is to take care of your body. Like, I think that's a non-negotiable thing to do for each and every one of y'all. Now, I'm not saying you need to be on that bodybuilder level of building the physique or elite athlete strength to just get super strong in the gym on whatever exercise you're doing. But I will say this, just doing the bare minimum to be able to get results, following a three times per week training frequency in the gym, doesn't really take that much time out of your week, right? You're only investing literally just a few hours per week. On a session to session basis, you're probably investing like anywhere between one to an hour and a half of that day. So if you're not working out, something is telling me that you're not taking your body seriously. The simplest fixes to a lot of people's illnesses and just like psh, mood swings and all of that like can easily be solved by just going out to the gym, doing something with your body. Because the thing is that I noticed with me is like whenever I work out, man, I feel so much better after the workout. I feel more motivated to get stuff done, like I mentioned earlier. And another thing too is like you're also conditioning your body to essentially take on stress, right? Because whenever you're engaging some kind of physical activity, you're just inducing a certain signal of stress to your body. So you're also building some kind of like tolerance to some kind of pain, right? And that can be transferred onto like skills outside of life, right? So you being able to be more consistent on doing a hard task that you don't want to do, that comes from the gym, right? Me doing like my squats, me doing like the way to dips and going heavy, 
Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put my body through that stress. I don't want to put my body through that pain, especially when I know I'm going to get sore and fatigued and all that good stuff after the session, but I still do it. So I'm pretty much conditioning myself to just endure pain, to increase my tolerance for pain, right? So all in all, if you truly care about yourself, just invest a few hours per week to your body. All right, you're gonna thank me later. You're gonna thank yourself later, actually. So after the gym, we obviously gotta go back to the kitchen and re-up on some energy. Now me personally, I voluntarily like to intermittent fast, meaning I don't have my first meal in the beginning part of my day. So that's usually about four to up to five hours after first waking up. Like I legit don't have a meal until then. And I'm completely normal with like going to the gym on the empty stomach, drinking like coffee on empty stomach. Um, I do incur some kind of calorie because of the milk, of course. I'm not doing it for the purposes of essentially entering that ketogenic stage, you know, that fat burning process. It's more so of like, yo, I'm just naturally not that hungry in the morning. And I actually feel better in the gym because I'm just lighter. I don't have any like food weighing me down with my calisthenic movements. You know, whether I'm doing like the handstand push-ups or like the planche, like that actually does take a toll in terms of like how much I weigh in the gym. So I like to be as light as possible and me not eating, you know, before the gym or anything like that really does help into my performance. But I also notice this too, like whenever I do have like a meal early on, I feel a little bit lethargic. I feel like kind of like tired in a sense. So with that being said, I noticed that it wouldn't really be productive to get like my majority of the work in the morning. Um, so yeah, I not only just curb my appetite, I feel more productive. So this is what works for me. So yeah, let me know. Do y'all drink coffee? Do y'all drink anything else like water, juice, smoothies? What do y'all do in the morning? Like what's your morning routine in terms of like uh, what y'all eat or drink for like energy? I'm kind of curious to know. And then usually at the tail end of my morning, I typically allow one to two hours to strictly do busy work. Pretty much a lot of the tasks that I hate doing throughout the day. This mainly includes like editing my YouTube videos or like Instagram videos. Um, I personally like to do the bulk of my editing in the morning. I typically don't like to edit. Um, it takes too much time. It's like super time consuming, but it's like very repetitive and easy. So I'm like, all right, let me just go ahead and knock it out the first part of the day because I am the most like energized, the most motivated and inspired to do any kind of work. So the rest of the evening, if I wanted to, I can kind of just like focus on more creative work, like scripting or thinking of ideas and whatnot. Um, some people like to do it other ways. Some people like to like plan their day in the morning. Some people like to just get the creative juices flowing from their brain to brainstorm. And essentially that works for them. But for me, I found that it kind of shoots me on the foot by the end of the day or like on another day, if I just don't want to do any of the boring work, quote unquote. So if I just knock that out in the morning, I pretty much save myself from feeling super uh, demotivated or unmotivated, whatever the word is, y'all get me though. But anyways, as long as you're doing something productive, that's all that really matters. As long as you're taking one step closer towards your goal, you can't go wrong with that. But hey, what do I know? Cobra trains, he's up next. Make sure y'all subscribe to him, he's number one out here. He's the toughest fitness guy out here.